Because of laws like the Americans with Disabilities Act, you have the right to equal opportunities in the workplace. The ADA is an anti-discrimination law that ensures you have full access to all benefits and the opportunities that everyone else has. Both you and your employer have responsibilities for ensuring this equal access. It's the employer's responsibility to provide you with reasonable accommodations that will allow you to perform the necessary tasks on your job. I'll give you a few examples of those that are listed here. Suppose you're involved in meetings or you need to contact people through the telephone. Maybe communicating with your coworkers, as well as being involved in different trainings, such as we have listed here. It is your responsibility to make your needs known to the employer so that they understand what accommodations you require to perform your job. This process is called self-advocating, which means that you are your own advocate and get the necessary support you need in order to perform your job. If you do not let your employer know what accommodation you need, then they are not required to provide anything. Self-advocating and your responsibility as far as asking for the right type of accommodations. How do you know you're asking for the right type of accommodations? Part of self-advocating and asking for the right accommodations is knowing what is available and commonly used in the workplace. And that's the focus of this video. Now I'm going to describe accommodations most often used in the workplace. It's important to learn that you have options and what those options are. This video will help you understand how to inform and recommend to the company the types of accommodations and needs to best suit you. According to the Job Accommodation Network, the acronym is JAN, you can see their website here, www.askjan.org. When companies are making decisions, on how to provide accommodations, they have certain questions and concerns that they tend to ask. If you do not inform them of your needs or the accommodations, then they won't know. It's a good idea to have these in mind. I encourage you to explain your hearing loss, what that means, as you can see here. First off, what does it mean to have hearing loss for you? Do you have a hearing aid? Can you read lips? Are you profoundly deaf? Or rely completely on sign language? It's important to explain those points. Number two, what is your preferred mode of communication with those around you? Third, do you use any audible technology, such as an FM loop? And will the company provide that for you? The second question here specifically relates to your job duties and responsibilities. First, you have to consider what type of duties it entails. Are any of those duties or responsibilities going to be a struggle as a result of your hearing loss? And who will you be communicating with as well as how often? Where will the communication happen? Will there be team meetings, one-on-one, -on -one, emails, telephone conversations? Those type of points need to be covered. And it's important that you know all of these in order to help you have a better rapport with the company, as well as setting up the best accommodation and support you need.
when considering different job accommodations available in the workplace. It's helpful to think about them as they relate to different situations. Communication may be a challenge. The following categories that you see here are articles from the website that I mentioned earlier, the Job Accommodations Network website. It's entitled Accommodation and Compliance Series, Employees with Hearing Loss. Those three categories are listed here. Difficulty communicating face-to-face. -face, difficulty communicating in groups, meetings, or trainings. As well as difficulty communicating by telephone. Now let's look at each of these situations and consider the common accommodation options that can help you overcome these communication barriers. Difficulty communicating face-to-face. -face. It can be difficult to communicate face-to-face -face with a coworker, but there are many technologies and options for overcoming this barrier. One thing you must always take into account before agreeing to use an accommodation is to make sure that it fits your preferred method of communicating. That means if you feel that reading and writing is not your strong suit, it's probably not wise to communicate in that manner. Now you see we have a list of different accommodations that you can choose from sign language interpreters. They can be used both in person or through VRI. C-A-R-T, CART, means that if people are speaking in the room, there's a person listening and captioning that on a screen. The next one is computers. There are software that can recognize people's voice and translate that into text. Hearing devices that can enhance your hearing, such as FM loops, text messaging, or instant messaging, as well as the typical pen and paper method. Computers can also be utilized for communication, telephones. The iPads that you've seen can be used. Or you know those dry erase boards? That's another option. Even a chalkboard can be utilized. And finally, you can go ahead and encourage your coworkers to learn just the basics in sign language. Difficulty communicating in groups, meetings, or trainings. This can often be a challenge and requires a combination of technology and knowledge on the part of your coworkers. Accommodation options are listed here. The sign language interpreter, we have CART, C-A-R-T, record and transcribing meetings, providing written materials in advance, making sure that DVDs, videos, and web content is captioned. Meet in small groups and sit at a round table to facilitate lip reading. Set up room to accommodate deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Educate staff on meeting etiquette. For example, one person talking at a time. People who are speaking should not cover their mouth so that a hard of hearing person is able to effectively lip read. And third, maintain eye contact with the individual. Don't look around the room as you're speaking, but look directly at the person. This list can help you communicate more effectively in meetings and trainings. Difficulty using a telephone. The telephone is an obvious barrier for a deaf employee. 
there are many technologies that can provide accommodations, such as these listed here. We have the video relay service, VRS. There are telephones that have captioning, like CapTel, as well as voicemail transcription, which transcribes voicemail to email or to a text message. Use of email, texting, and instant messaging rather than the telephone. As you can see, there are many accommodation options to choose from. The most important thing is to make sure that you request what is right for you. Consider the questions we discussed earlier as far as your needs for hearing loss and what is needed to help you do your job. If you're aware of them, write a list, provide them to the employer, let them set up a plan in order to accommodate you appropriately. If those steps are ineffective, be sure to inform them of that. It is in the interest of everyone that you receive the right accommodation so that you can do your very best on the job.